Hello, today I'm going to show you how to merge two factory DNA kits using Borland Genetics web tools. But first, let me explain what that means and why you should do this. Let's start out with some Borland Genetics terminology. Throughout my videos and blogs, I often refer to the term factory kits. By factory kits, I simply mean raw DNA data files that were created directly by the testing companies by processing actual DNA samples. So by my definition, when you test with Ancestry or 23andMe or MyHeritage, for example, and then download the raw data file from their site, that raw data file is a factory kit. The distinction that I make when using this term is the contrast between factory kits and mathematically reconstructed kits, or more broadly, synthetic kits, which are derivative in nature. Synthetic kits are mathematically created by applying transformations to factory kits and have some different properties from factory kits, such as non-standard templates, the presence of white noise, induced homozygosity, and some other things we'll talk about in future videos as these concepts apply to more complex reconstruction workflows than we'll be dealing with today. But for purposes of this video, it's sufficient to know that a factory kit is the file you received from your testing company when you downloaded their raw DNA data. Next, I want to briefly discuss why it is best practice to merge your factory kits prior to working with third-party raw DNA tools such as Borland Genetics web tools. The fundamental concept to understand is that different testing companies sample different sets of data points along your chromosomes. We refer to the totality of the data points sampled in a single DNA kit as that kit's template. Also, I might as well mention that individual testing companies have changed their chips over the years, also resulting in different kit templates. When you hear people talking about an Ancestry version 1 kit or an Ancestry version 2 kit or a 23andMe version 4 kit, they're referring to the tests by their template revision version. The ISOG wiki, that's I-S-O-G-G, -G, does a great job of tracking information about precisely when the changes in templates occurred at each of the testing companies. An individual data point sampled and reported in your raw DNA file is called an SNP, short for Single Nucleotide Polymorphism and usually pronounced SNP. At each SNP, the data file records the observed genotype, which may be something like AA or CT or GG, and you can learn more about SNPs and genotypes than some of the other Borland Genetics learning materials. It's sufficient to know for today that factory kits from different companies or that were originally processed years apart will likely have different templates consisting of different sets of SNPs. The next concept to understand is that in order to determine whether two DNA kits share one or more matching segments, their templates must be sufficiently compatible. That is, there must be sufficient overlap in the SNPs tested by the two testing companies. Some types of comparisons are notoriously incompatible and are known to cause major problems for matching algorithms, such as trying to compare an Ancestry version 1 kit with a 23andMe version 5 kit. When you compare these two kinds of kits, you will not get an accurate result because they are said to have poor SNP overlap. For those who use GEDmatch, you see these types of comparisons in red or in pink on their website. I have a graphic up on my screen now, and what we're looking at is a portion of a raw DNA file from my Ancestry version 1 kit side by side with my 23andMe version 4 kit to illustrate the concept of SNP overlap. Here I've used green to denote an SNP that both testing companies have sampled, and we can use that data when making a comparison. I've used red to denote an SNP that only Ancestry sampled, red like an apple. I've used orange to denote an SNP that only 23andMe sampled, orange like an orange. You cannot compare apples to oranges, and these SNPs are just about useless when comparing or working with these two DNA kits. A note for advanced users watching this video, I'm setting aside the concept of imputation for now as that this is meant to be an introductory material. The number of useful overlapping SNPs for comparison total only eight in this example. The next concept you need to know is that accurately comparing two strands of DNA, whether on the same template or on different templates, requires a minimum overlapping SNP density. That is, there have to be enough green compatible SNPs per unit of length or you're not going to get an accurate result. Through my own research, I've determined that the threshold is approximately 75 overlapping SNPs per centimorgan. Below that, you will run into trouble and you will get falsely matching segments. So for a small 7 centimorgan matching segment, for example, 
you're going to seriously want to second guess its reliability if there are not at least 525 compatible SMPs being compared, 525 being 75 times 7. Just as accurate DNA matching relies upon sufficiency of SNP overlap, SNP overlap also comes into play when reconstructing kits of your ancestors. The primary two quality metrics we have for assessing our reconstructions are coverage and resolution. We want to create kits with as high resolution as possible, defined as calculated SNPs per centimorgan, so that they will perform best when used in comparisons with other kits because they will be more likely to have sufficient overlapping SNPs for use in those comparisons. So one thing that we can and should do if we've tested with more than one testing companies is to create a merged kit, or what GEDmatch refers to a super kit, and I think that terminology is going to stick. So what you'll be doing is providing Borland Genetics with both tests that you've done for the same donor, and then use the appropriate web tool, and I'll show you how in a moment, that will take all of the SNPs reported by both testing companies and create a kit for you on an expanded or combined template. Think about the example I showed with the apples and oranges. Now I've prepared some similar graphics illustrating comparisons between a super kit and each of the original kits. The resulting merged kit or super kit we create by combining those two kits is going to now perform well in matching algorithms whether it's compared against the Ancestry or the 23andMe factory kit. The overlap issue has been practically eliminated. When comparing the Borland Genetics merged kit to the Ancestry kit, now, 14 SNPs will be factored into the comparison rather than 8. Now here's the comparison between the Borland Genetics Merged Kit and the 23andMe Kit. In this comparison, 24 SNPs will be considered. Remember, a comparison between an Ancestry and a 23andMe Kit over the same span of chromosome would have only considered 8 SNPs. The rest were either apples or oranges. Furthermore, when you match this super kit with, say, a MyHeritage or FTDNA kit, even though the merge was between an Ancestry and a 23andMe kit, the super kit is going to have increased resolution generally and is also going to perform better in cross-platform matching with tests from other companies. Also, when you use one of the super kits as input for a DNA reconstruction workflow in Borland Genetics, the output, or your reconstructed Ancestor kit, is going to have much higher resolution than had you used either one of the individual factor kits as input. You can read more about this in my blog post entitled Why You Should Merge Your Factory DNA Kits, SNP Overlap Demystified, which I released simultaneously with this tutorial. I'll put a link to the blog post in the description of this video. But now let's move on from what and why into the how. How do we actually merge the two factory kits for the same donor or create a super kit in Borland Genetics? First, you'll need to upload the two factory kits to Borland Genetics if you haven't already done so. I have a separate video in this channel on transferring raw data to Borland Genetics that you can watch if you need help with that. For this video, I'm going to assume that you've already uploaded the two kits. Now, they do not need to have already gone through full Borland Genetics processing. You can merge two kits immediately after you upload them and get the resulting output kit into the same processing batch if you like. So we're going to start off by going to the Resource Manager, and this is where we can find my DNA inventory. And here I have kits for me and for my mother. Note that my mother only has one kit linked to her profile, so there is no scroll bar. Whereas for, my, for me, I have tested with both Ancestry and 23andMe, and therefore I have a scroll bar so I could see both of those kits. But we're actually going to go to the, to the View Profile, View Donor Profile button here. When we scroll down, we get to the Humpty Dumpty Merge Utility. And you will only see this on donor profiles where there is more than one kit uploaded to that profile. Uh, there has to be more than one kit linked to the same profile. So what we're going to do is we're going to perform the Humpty Dumpty Merge Option 3. If you have, in other situations, once you begin to use Borland Genetics a bit more, you may have some options for Option 1 and Option 2. But here, the only choice is Humpty Dumpty Merge Option 3. This option is used to merge multiple factory kits pertaining to the same living donor 
to create a single output kit capturing data recorded at all SNPs represented in the individual input kits. For example, if you test it at both Ancestry and 23andMe, this will combine the data and create a more detailed profile of your genome and will contribute to higher resolution reconstructions of your ancestor. So that's what we want to do. We want to perform Humpty Dumpty Merge Option 3. Now the next screen allows you to choose which of your kits that are linked to this profile you'd like to merge. And it should only show you factory kits. It should be smart like that. Um, here there are only two, so I'm going to select both. And my choices are I can cancel and return to the donor profile, or I can execute the merge script on the selected kits. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to merge the kits. So it says I, the estimated wait time is about 15 minutes. Um, however, I tend to find it's usually a, a matter of seconds. So I'm actually going to sit here and wait. I'm not going to fast forward through it. Another thing you could do on this wait screen, and right now uh, I'm the only sponsor here, so I just have some of my music. But whatever video I put here, you can sort of use as an alarm. So you could press play on the video, and in this case, it'll start playing some music. <laughs> And when the music stops, even if you're on the other side of the room doing something else, you know it's done. Let's say back to resource manager widget. Let's see if we were successful here. So now when we scroll through my linked DNA resources, we have the Ancestry kit, the 23andMe kit, and the Borland Genetics merged kit. Once the resulting merged output kit processes, we'll want to use that kit from now on when evaluating DNA matches and when doing our reconstruction workflows, because doing so will yield much more accurate matches and will result in higher resolution reconstructed output kits for your ancestors. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.